Scroll triggered animations are used all over the place. So in this video, let's learn how to create them using the Framer Motion Animation Library and React. If you're new to the channel, my name is Greg Fine, and here at The Code Creative, we explore the more creative sides of coding. Now, if we scroll down this Apple iPhone page, we can see some examples of these scroll triggered animations. So let's scroll down a bit and check out here. You see their opacity fading up. They weren't just triggered when the page loaded. Rather, they were triggered by their entrance into the viewport. So let's flip over to our code now, and we'll take a look at how we can achieve this kind of scroll triggered animation with Framer Motion. So I've got my scroll component here that I created. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the initial opacity to one so we can see what we have first. So let me just show you if I scroll down, we got our famous blue box. And what I want to do is when we scroll down into that part of the page, when the blue box first enters the viewport down here, I want it to fade up and I want it to also scale up a little bit. So let's start by initializing its opacity to zero. And so usually if we wanted to do an opacity animation, we could use the animate prop, but that would pretty much fire when the page loaded. So in order for it to fire only when this box comes into view, we're going to use a prop called while in view. And it's as simple as putting our animatable properties in here. So now we're going to set opacity to one. Let's also do a scale animation to 1.25. And as well, we can set our transition in here. And let's give it a duration of three seconds. So let me save this and now let's come into the browser and let's scroll down and pay attention to the bottom of the page. As soon as that blue box enters the viewport, we see it start animating, fading up and scaling up. And it does the same thing when it re-enters the viewport on its way back in, you see? So just so you know, I'm getting this scroll bar here in the browser because in my styles, I've set the body to have a height of 300 VH or viewport height units. And in addition, I've given some margin top and bottom of 1000 pixels just to give some surrounding space as well to the box. Now there's another prop that we can look at and that's called viewport. So let's add the viewport prop. And there are a couple things that we can do here. But the one I want to show you next is called once. And this is going to specify if we want the animations to be re-triggered or if we just want them to play once the first time they come into view. Let's set this to true and see what we get here. Let's scroll down and we see our animation. Now if we scroll back up and we re-enter the viewport here, we no longer see the animation play again. But to see the difference, let's comment this out. And let's try that again. So here's the first time. And then let's go one more time. And we see the animation replay. So often you only want these scroll triggered animations to play once on the initial presentation. Otherwise it can become too busy and too distracting to constantly have these animations triggered every time the user scrolls up and down. Going back to the Apple iPhone site, if we refresh the page and we see some of those animations, like here, for example, and then we scroll them out of the viewport, when they re-enter, you can see they no longer play again. Let's scroll down and here we see these play. But if we scroll them out and come back, they no longer replay. And that's a very common technique there. Now we can get further control of our scroll triggered animation with another property that's available in the viewport prop, and that's called amount. So let's flip back to our code here in our blue box and see how amount works. And let's also bring back this once true so the animation doesn't keep re-triggering. But basically amount is going to allow us to specify how much of the element that we're animating needs to be visible in the viewport before its animation is triggered. So the default of this is sum. And by the way, options here are sum, all, or we can specify a number, which we're going to look at in a second. But sum is basically saying that once the element enters the viewport, it's going to trigger the animation, right? And that's what we have occurring at the moment with that immediate scale up. But let's try setting this to all. And now in this case, this entire blue box 
needs to be visible in the viewport before that scale up even starts. So now let's try this out. And I'm going to scroll down kind of slowly. Just so you can see that at this point, the blue box hasn't scaled yet because not all of it is completely visible. But notice as soon as it becomes completely visible here, the animation is triggered. So now those two options, some or all, are good for kind of a blunt approach. But if we want to get more specific, we can also give amount a number. And that's going to be a number between 0 and 1 to specify a percentage of the element that we need to be visible in the viewport before the animation plays. So let's say that we want half of it to be visible before the animation is fired. So for that we can do 0 0.5. Let's try that out. So here we go. No animation fired yet. But once we get about here, there we go, and that's about 50%. You see, if we wanted to wait a little bit longer, we can do, let's say, 0.8, which is 80%. And let's see the difference. So no animation, no animation, but about here. So a little bit closer to the end of the element is when we see the animation start playing. All right, now I'm going to show you another property that can work in tandem with the amount property to further specify when the animation is going to get triggered for the element. Now just to point out, I've increased the margin to 1500 pixels because I had the window zoomed up a little bit before and I've reset the zoom level now back to zero so it doesn't interfere with the explanation of this next property. So what we'll do to start is we'll comment out the amount property that we have currently in the viewport object. And let's just talk about the viewport for a second. So at the moment, all of this white background here, this is occupying the viewport. And by default, when the top of the element first enters the viewport, the animation is going to be triggered. So you can see here, it immediately starts to scale. But we can sort of redefine what we want the dimensions of the viewport to be. And for that, we're going to use a property on the viewport object called margin. Now we can set this to more than one value, but for now we're going to start out with a single value. And let's do negative 200 pixels. Now I'm going to scroll down once again, and I want you to notice the difference. Notice when the animation actually fires. So let's scroll down, and here you see the box. It's still at its normal scale. So look, it takes a little bit longer before, there you go, before it starts to scale up. So basically what we've done here is we've said, okay, well the normal viewport is this entire thing, all of this white background. But now we're saying, let's reduce what we're considering to be the viewport by 200 pixels on all sides. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier to see if we comment out the transition. So we get the default quick transition. And also let's go ahead and tweak this margin to do something a little bit different. Let's say negative 500 pixels. So now it's going to take even longer into the viewport before the animation fires. And let's try it now. And here it comes, no animation. And there we go. And to really fine tune things, we can use the amount property in tandem with the margin property. So let's look at this one more time before we bring the amount property in. And let's kind of try to find the exact point when the animation fires. It's here. But let's say that we also now bring back that amount property. And let's do 0.5. So what we should see now is that not only are we considering the margin to have been offset by negative 500 pixels, but once the top of the element has hit what we're now considering to be the viewport, the animation is only going to fire when 50% of that element has made its way into that newly defined viewport. So let's try it out. Let's scroll down. And there we go. Now with margin, we can also pass in multiple values. So at the moment, this negative 500 pixels is offsetting the margin on the top, the right, the bottom, and the left. But let's say that we wanted to define a different offset for the top versus the bottom. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we do for the top negative 200 pixels. For the right, we do zero pixels. For the bottom, we do negative 500 pixels, and for the left, we do zero pixels. And we're also going to comment out the once true, because we want to see the animation replay 
when we re-enter the viewport from the top. Oh yeah, let's also comment out this amount, because that'll make things more confusing. But let's save, and let's check this out. So here we're saying for the bottom, we're doing negative 500 pixels. So instead of the element triggering when it hits this bottom of the viewport, we're going to offset that by negative 500 pixels, which I don't know is going to be like somewhere around here. So let's scroll and we'll see how the animation is offset. And there we go at negative 500 pixels. And then let's scroll out of the viewport. And let's scroll back up so we can bring our element back down into the viewport. And what you're going to see is that the animation is going to play now when it's 200 pixels down from the top of the viewport. So let's check that out. If you're interested in learning how to bring your web pages to life with cool animations, GSAP, and scrolly telling techniques, check out my course, Scrolly Telling 101. Since I launched the course, the response has been amazing, with students commenting on the wealth of web dev tips and tricks included in the lessons. I'm going to leave a link down below for you, and you can start by checking out some of the free preview videos there. I think you're going to love it.